today to introduce to you Sydney Johnson from Robinson Community Learning Center. Um, Sydney was nice enough to come um, this meeting because last meeting not only did we have a snow day for students, but it was uh, it was not a very pleasant day. Board members don't take snow days, she says, <laughs> with her fingers crossed, hoping that we never have to. Um, but so she couldn't be here last time, but she was gracious enough to come this meeting. Um, she is a sixth grade student from Robinson CLC. Her academics are top notch and she displays great leadership skills. Sydney is a model student for her peers. In the classroom, she demonstrates excellent behavior and respect. Her work is always completed in a neat, organized fashion, giving her time to assist and tutor her peers. Outside of the classroom, she's stepped into the role of editor for the Robinson newspaper and has taken on many new responsibilities. Sydney's principal and teacher stated that her hard work ethic, giving heart, well-behaved manners, contagious personality, and warming smile make them proud to have her as a student. She has a very bright future ahead of her. Sydney, come on up. to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, I got to talk to your principal about you when you weren't here last time, so I know lots of wonderful things about you. That's Mr. Williams. And Mr. Jones is back there, too. Now, why don't you tell us who came with you today, other than Mr. Jones, who's been <laughs> Well, today my mom, Joy, came, and my sister, Leah, came. Thank you so much for coming. <laughs> we did talk about the fact that as exciting as our board meetings were, that it was not necessarily for them to stay, so we'll excuse you whenever you're ready. And thank you so much for taking the time to come and keep up the good work. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. All right, uh, any community and school reflections over the last couple of weeks? It's been a busy couple of weeks. Yeah. Got one real quick. This is actually something that for the future, but. Uh, working on uh, organizing reality check for Firestone High School again this year, and it's gonna take place April 29th at the school in the morning. And I wanted to thank um, Torchbearers of Akron. Uh, I was able through Nicole Mullet, who I believe is uh, one of the new class this year, and she also happens to work at Summit College. So many people at Akron Early College might know Nicole, but she was able to get reality check added to the formal service calendar for torchbearers, so reality check at Firestone High School anyways is a uh, an, an endorsed event for volunteerism for the torchbearers this year and uh, hopefully any other high schools that are doing reality check we can get the same accommodation from torchbearers so I wanted to say thank you to torchbearers and specifically Nicole. Mm -hmm. I wish I could have recorded that. She's the vice president. Okay. Sure. Yeah. To get it off. Yeah. Yeah, we'll need you to do that. Anyone else want to share? Just a couple of events. Um, you know, uh, our councilwoman, Tara Mosey's uh, sample, is opening up an opportunity during the Martin Luther King holiday for African public school students to attend a showing of Selma. Um, over at the Independence Theater, theater uh, up near Chapel Hill. Um, we had um, uh, a post conversation with some of the students and, you know, we just, it, it, it was just a, a real extraordinary experience just to uh, hear their insights and hear their thoughts about um, garnering some of the, um, the activities of collective works uh, that were exemplified in the film uh, to address some of the issues that uh, they're uh, having to confront today. 
uh, one of the other activities uh, that was um, a part of their um, viewing summer was that they would do a uh, essay um, about the film and they could potentially win gift certificates or a iPad uh, sponsored by State Representative Amelia Sykes. Um, uh, Pastor Butcher opened his church uh, and allowed the community to use it for an opportunity for students to come and kind of uh, depress, if you will, uh, to share uh, their thoughts, uh, their emotions about what they've seen, and again, to talk about uh, what to do going uh, forward. Um, on Saturday, uh, there was a, uh, a community forum uh, held at the Summit County Public Health called Health in All Policies, uh, looking at how we uh, consider health in all of our policies, whether we're constructing a building or, or whether, we, uh, or whether we're uh, beautifying a park, uh, so that the health of all residents are considered um, in decision making. And we are pleased to have some of the East uh, CLC students, I think they're part of um, um, Closing the Achievement Gap group. We worked with uh, Carla and, 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 and some of the teachers over there uh, to initially get their uh, thoughts on what they thought about um, health and what health meant to them as a community. And it was so important, I think, to have their voices in the discussion because oftentimes when you, when you ask adults, they're thinking about having more shops they can walk to. And, and, and one of the questions that were posed to uh, participants, and I think some of you guys may have taken this survey too, and I thank you, uh, was uh, how old did they think they would live uh, to be? And some of the responses from the, the young folks, uh, not only uh, some of the CTEC students that we did, uh, Akron's Peacekeeper, their concerns around their longevity that really hinges on uh, the violence in the community. And so just to have that voice uh, in the discussion was very important. Uh, I think some of them felt a little uh, trepidations because they're not used to interfacing with adults. Uh, so I'd really like for us to kind of drill down mm -hmm. a little further uh, so that we can get their full voices in, in the conversation. Um, I also had an opportunity to attend a couple of basketball games. I, I, didn't, I mean, I had felt a little nostalgic. I forgot what that really felt like. Um, I saw Firestone and Bukdo and North and, and, and Bukdo on um, the last couple of weeks. And so, um, great time had by all. <laughs> but really, thank you to the, the students at East uh, and the teachers that were able to participate. Nice. Lots of energy in those basketball games. Uh, I don't know. I just want to uh, talk about basketball. Uh, thank the LeBron James Family Foundation for several of us uh, board members were able to take advantage of tickets that were made available and to share with family and friends and to uh, support the Cavaliers and uh, Mr. LeBron James. And they, they keep on winning, so I guess that's a positive for us and our community. That so game was later. a turning point, wasn't it? I think it was because one of them, and we were. Yeah, so that there. means more there. tickets. <laughs> <laughs> Continue to. The announcer uh, said, "Reverend Walker's in the Hayes House." Uh, yeah. like Keep them going. <laughs> we, we were a little high up, but it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was still enjoyable. How's that nose? How's that nose, So uh, we we appreciate it. And the other was. Uh, Got a chance to go to the community welfare forum, uh, and Mr. James was the speaker. Uh, of course, he gave very pertinent and uh, information. But what was very nice was the a wide spectrum uh, networking that we have that supports our public education, and almost every group touched uh, public education in some form or fashion. So it was. Um, very interesting, and I hope I can get a chance to uh, have the final information how you become a member of that that forum, because I think that's something that we need to uh, keep our hands on uh, in that area. So I want to, I, um, I want to thank uh, our staff for giving us the opportunity to participate in that forum. 
Uh, I wanted to echo, I uh, as well was able to attend the Community uh, Welfare Forum, and uh, what really struck me is, is how much respect our superintendent has in the community. And secondly, when we're looking for uh, organizations and people to help with challenged families, it just was really nice to see all of the resources that showed up and were concerned and actually played a part in in the families and the children of our community. So that was nice. That's the first time I had an opportunity to attend that. Um, in addition, um, I went to the science fair at North High School with Mr. Miller um, and Ms. Mansfield this um, last Saturday. Uh, lots of interesting projects. The kids really worked hard and they explained their projects. And uh, there was one in particular I just wanted to bring up because I really got a kick out of it. Um, for those of you who don't know, I do a lot of criminal uh, defense work. And one of the <coughs> projects was on when you're showing mug shots to, so, to someone that's a victim to see if you can figure out who the suspect is, whether you do sequential photos or you do a whole page where you have six on one page. And this student came up with challenging that or seeing which would work better. And the conclusions were that there's less error by the person trying to name the right suspect if they do it sequential, you just look at one page at a time. And I'm happy to inform the public that that is the same uh, means that the Akron Police Department uses for their for their uh, <laughs> suspects. So I was interested to see that, and interesting and glad to see that the conclusions were, were the same. So, um, and one last item, um, we kind of pass it up and everyone thought we're done with football, but I'm going to bring up football one more time. There was a nice article in the Beacon Journal, obviously a number of them, about Ohio State, and I don't know if people caught the fact that there were a couple Akron Public School students that were mentioned, and I'm going to read this one from uh, January 12th in the Beacon, um, talks about Corey Smith. I'm just going to read a couple things. Bookdale High School product Corey Smith, a junior wide receiver, was named OSU <laughs> Special Teams Player of the Game for the Sugar Bowl victory over Alabama after making three kickoff coverage tackles inside the 16-yard line. They went on to say that Corey was laid out parallel to the ground, his helmet up, his chin strap around his nose, with his hands around the ankle of the kid from Alabama. Uh, and the Coombs is, I guess, one of the coaches. Um, just total sacrifice for his team. He was absolutely a game changer. So that was, that was nice to see. In addition to Corey Smith, is an unrelated uh, young man, Devin Smith, who spent two years at Ellet uh, High School, and uh, he actually made some accolades to uh, about Corey Smith and his impact on the team. So it was nice to see those students mentioned in their affiliation with our school system. And that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks for playing this. Yes, um, I, I just want to. I, I didn't go to any events, but uh, I was out in the community and. Um, the gentleman who I knew was an Akron police officer approached me and we were talking and there was a gentleman with him but I, I got a chance to, to talk to both of them but the gentleman was talking and praising so high the uh, architectural program that we have at, at Firestone High School and he was saying how good it is and how, 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 how he just gave all type of praises to, to the program and he kept going on I ended up standing there for about a half hour listening to him talk about the program because he kept going on and on about it but I just wanted to uh, give a shout out to the teacher over there and I can't remember his name I knew I wouldn't remember unless I wrote it down but uh, who's doing a good job over there and they, they praised him as well so congratulations to the, them and do a good job. that's it Mr. Spat. Um, I attended a few things. I did attend the Akron School of Public Nursing graduation uh, this last week. I thought that was interesting. Um, it's a good program. Howard was there. Um, and apparently we haven't been there in a while, so it was nice to go there and, and uh, see them graduate. And I, I know it's a different kind of program, but um, for a different set of students, but it was it was, uh, it was really nice. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was good. And they were really happy to have someone there. I, I wanted to piggyback off Reverend Walker um, and I were both at the Martin Luther King celebration for the district um, at Miller South um, back what, it was before Martin Luther King Day. Um, and that was just a lovely celebration. Um, there, was, uh, there was singing and music. And it was it was lovely, and I wanted to make sure that that got 
a shout out also. I did see pictures of Miss Sims on Facebook at the movie, so I knew she'd been there. That was one <laughs> thing. Um, and uh, just to also mention, in addition to the science fair on Saturday, Firestone High School held um, the first time that they've ever uh, had the OMEA competition for uh, music. And we're very fortunate that with the hire of Kate Ferguson as the band director for Firestone, she brought with her the knowledge on how to run one of those. <laughs> because it is no small task. And um, as overwhelmed as the parents were, she was as cool as a cucumber. And the kids were wonderful ambassadors, not just for the school, but for our district. Um, not just in how they represented themselves as, as vocalists or musicians, but also uh, the ones that, that showed people how to get around the building and um, got to be a fly on the wall a little bit listening to my husband talk about APS and talk about the new building and um, to have people ask us a lot of questions and have nobody know who we were. And um, that was kind of nice and uh, very impressed families from out from all over our region who got to come and see that you can, in an urban district, do a wonderful arts program and um, and manage a huge event like we did. It'll be much easier when we have the new parking. It was it was a challenge, but not as bad as wrestling on Sunday. I will say um, that it was easier to get around on, on Saturday and that event it was on Sunday. But um, that it worked, and I give Kate Ferguson and all of those um, the staff that helped make that work a lot of credit. It was, it was a huge event. I, I would love to know how many people went in and out. Do we have any idea of that? I think they told us it would be 2,000. Um, usually in 10, 20 minute increments, some big groups, some small groups, solo and ensembles. So um, it, it was wonderful. So thank you, Deb, for all the work that I know that you and Karen G. Dick and everyone did behind the scenes as well. It's been a busy couple weeks, even with the snow. Um, so, uh, we have no request to publicly address the board today, but we do have a recognition, and I'm very excited to welcome forward Mr. Eric Matthews. Come on. Mr. Matthews. You guys can welcome him. It's okay. <laughs> All right, this is Mr. Matthews. He is a career education teacher at North High School. Alexander yes. <laughs> In December, he was named the National New CTE Teacher of the Year, and he received his award in Nashville. Christine Gardner, Executive Director of Ohio Association for Career and Technical Education, said in a letter to the superintendent, we are so proud that one of our Ohio career technical teachers received such an honor, while we are as proud of his accomplishment as they are at, at Ohio ACTE. We have a certificate for Mr. Matthews in recognition of his achievement and thank him for representing Akron Public Schools in such a fantastic way. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank God for his grace to teach, okay, because um, if it uh, was not about him, I would not have the ability to teach. I would also like to thank uh, Howard Lawson for hiring me a few years ago. Uh, Mr. James, I don't know if you remember, but about six and a half years ago, I came into your office mm -hmm. and I said I want to have a contribution on impacting uh, our students in Akron. I don't know if you remember that. You do. I've I've really uh, learned to um, to take your interest in having our students be career and post-secondary ready, and that's really something that's near and dear to my heart having a former background as a human resources executive. I want to see uh, our students be ready for the workforce and to be ready for uh, uh, college. So uh, I would like to, to recognize the board. This is National Board Month, so let's give them a hand. <laughs> Thank you very much. We just want another award for that. <laughs> I, I, uh, I want to say something briefly to, about Mr. Matthews. I've been at North a number of times this year, my other job, and I've seen him in action numerous times from last year and this year, and he does a real good job of working with the kids and, and the, and the uh, department there and with the kids, and I mean, just a very, very good job. Always professional, always doing things in an upright manner. I think 
that's very good for our kids. They have a good role model in Mr. Matthews there at North High School. Thank you. So thank you very much. Thank you. I want to coach the girls' game against oh. Garfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Marcy, <Marcia? laughs> Marcy, 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 all right, that was lovely. Um, the next order of business is the approval of our meeting minutes from January 7th, our special meeting min minutes for January 7th, 2015. So, um, second. And, oh, I guess we can do both at the same time? Okay. And I'm sorry, that would be the special meeting and the regular meeting. Is that, is that okay to keep your motions? Yeah. I apologize for doing that incorrectly. Any questions or concerns about minutes from either of those meetings? All right, hearing none, roll call, please. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mr. Lombardi? <coughs> yes. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Sims? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. All right, next, our superintendent recommendations. So, Madam President, I have before me for your consideration 38 personnel recommendations. These recommendations are in proper form, and I move their approval. Second. <coughs> questions on personnel or comments? I have a quick question. Um, on page seven, there's there's two references to um, one's a police liaison, and the other one is regular security. Um, I'm just wondering, what does a police liaison officer do, and why is that salary higher than a regular security person? Um, okay, so our regular security, we call them highlighters are um, uh, staff that we'll use in buildings to supplement uh, you know security issues so they can be in our administrative facilities or school facilities and those are typically part-time people 24 hours a week for the um, officers those we do hire part-time Akron police officers for a variety of reasons some cover athletic events and then some will cover um, buildings on an as-needed basis depending on where student services wants to assign them. Their rate is typically determined by the City of Akron Police Department. So the police liaison officer is actually an officer? Yes. Okay, that straightens it. Thanks. Mm -hmm. What's the definition of constructive resignation? Uh, which item are you referring to? Uh, 23? Yeah, uh, constructive resignation, uh, in this case, uh, these were substitutes and um, we tried to contact them to show up for assignments and they just never took an assignment and so after a while we're going to take them out of the system. Any other questions in personal? Hearing none, roll call please. Mr. Lombardi? Yes. Mrs. Mansfield? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Sims? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Uh, next, Madam President, I have before me for your consideration one motion and 13 resolutions on the consent agenda. These recommendations are in proper form and I move their approval. So moved. Second. Moved and properly seconded. Any questions or concerns about consent? One motion and one motion and 13 resolutions I do have a, oh. a quick question or a comment I'm sorry <laughs> yes I was like you. am I missing yeah okay it's the secret ones that I'm oh, not telling <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry <laughs> did someone say they had a question I'm sorry they, they. actually that's the um Item 8 is Harris Community Learning Center, mm -hmm. and I think, uh, actually, I look at that, I already spoke to Mr. Fletcher about my issues as to what was going for what. It's a large item, so I have some questions about what the general made versus the other tradesmen, and I think I'm, I'm good on that. Thank you. Anything else? Roll call, please. Mrs. Mansfield. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mrs. Sims? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mr. Lombardi? Yes. And finally, Madam President, I have before me for your consideration seven business affairs recommendations. These recommendations are in proper form and I move their approval. So moved. Second. Moved and properly seconded and counted to make sure they're yes. all there. <laughs> 
Any questions about business affairs? Yeah, why were two and three separate contracts and not one combined? It has to do with the actual time frame in which these services will be provided and the funding year in which the funds will be taken from. Item number two will be taken out of the FY15 budget and item three will be out of the FY16 budget. Fiscal year 16 will start July 1st. So this basically um, June 1st to September 30th. By the time we get the invoice and process, it'll be in the next fiscal year. So June and July for item three is taken out of 15? I'm sorry? In item number two, the January to June is going to be paid for this fiscal year. For the next one, the work uh, from June 1st to September 30th will be out of next fiscal year. Fiscal year starts July 1st. Yeah, that says June 1st, so right. that doesn't. And, but that is the reason it, it takes us time to encumber them to take the boxes and start doing this work as of June 1st in order to complete it by September 30th. But the payment would be out of the funding for the FY16 year, which begins July 1st. Roll call, please. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Sims? Yes. Reverend Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mr. Lombardi? Yes. Mrs. Means? Yes. And um, I have one new introduction to make on the personnel recommendations. Uh, Kathy McVeigh will introduce our new digital learning. Marcy, if you could please stand. Tonight I have um, with us is Marcy Gray. Marcy is a graduate of Lake High School in Mill Millbury, Ohio. She obtained her bachelor's degree from Penn State University in 1994, and then a master's degree in instructional technology from the University of Akron in 2001, and received her uh, administrative license as well. She did her student teaching at both the primary and secondary level in Congo Falls before beginning her teaching career at Akron Public Schools in August of 97. Her first assignment was as a career tech education instructor and career prep at Goodyear, Goodrich, Reedinger, and Kent Middle Schools. She continued teaching career prep at these schools until August of 2005 when she became a math teacher at Goodyear Middle School. In 2010, Ms. Ebright became an instructional technology teacher for the district where she has continued working until the present time. Tonight, she was recommended for the digital learning specialist position in the technology services department. Congratulations, Marcy. I've been, you know, with Akron for the last 20 years, and it's been my heart at home here due to the fact that I've always felt supported, encouraged, in awe of all the great things that take shape in this district, and it's especially true today as we're moving forward with these digital learning technologies. I'm just excited about that, so I really want to thank you for that vision and your endorsement, and I'm looking forward to the next 20 years. <laughs> Um, why don't you let me go, because mine's short, and then we'll see if we're ready for Ryan. Um, I wanted to um, to pass out, I sent you an email today, board members. This is, unfortunately, it's a couple days sh short, but I wanted to let you know and, and let whatever parents know about the graduation matters talks that are going to be in the schools, in the high schools. Um, as a parent of a, of a current eighth grader, there were, there were all calls that went out to all parents um, notifying you of when your meeting is, at least I know there was from Firestone, and there were emails that went out from the middle schools as well, um, notifying these are, or, are to help parents to navigate the new graduation requirements. The current freshman class and the current eighth grade class will be the first two that don't fall under the OGT. So trying to understand 
um, what those changes are going to mean, especially if you're like me and you have two kids that are going to fall under one system and one that's going to fall under, under another, trying to keep all of that straight can be very complicated. The reason I wanted board members to make sure that they at least were aware this was going on is not just because I don't that I think you need a refresher. You you get these at OSBA, you get them through all kinds of different documents and great updates from um, curriculum and instruction. But I wanted you to have a chance, if you could, to see it the way parents see it, see how it's presented to them. So if they come to you with questions, you can say, you know, and say, well, I heard at this meeting that I was at. Maybe you have a chance to have seen the same presentation that they have, just so that um, you feel comfortable with that. If you can't, I'm sure that Ellen and the team that, that handles all of, uh, and Mr. Black and, and everyone who handles those matters would be happy to meet with the board um, or individuals if they have questions. But just to encourage all of us to to help be, or be able to help navigate this, the new changes. Um, it, it's been a, a, a very, fluid landscape, let's just say, to put it nicely in what's been coming down from Columbus even as, as soon as whether we were going to be online or, or paper and pencil this year. Um, but just keeping up with that and, and knowing what our parents know and being aware that they are being given the opportunity to come in um, and hear. And that is all I had to say. Shall I get, have Ryan go? Or are you sure. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Treasurer's report. Quite a few updates from our monthly reconciliation and financial reports. I hope you are finding this new format useful. Uh, we combined two months into this last report with a couple pages I wanted to highlight. One was on the October forecast, we talked about reappraisal. We talked about 70% of our funding comes from our local taxpayers. We talked about what that might look like. Our actuals came in a little, um, a little less than expected, so that's better for us. We were anticipating a negative 6% decline in local property taxes, or 6% decline in local property values on our homes here in Akron, and that came in at negative 5%. But the big change was in our commercial industrial property. That changed quite a bit. We were also predicting a negative 5% decline. Commercial industrial property increased at 3.2%. I don't know what makes up that property increase yet, so that my next phone call will be to Summit County Fiscal Office to try to find if there are some major facilities or companies that went through reappraisal that significantly adjusted those values. So although we're still seeing uh, decline of property values, maybe we've, we're starting to see the bottom of that. Uh, we're going to talk about what financial impact that has for the May forecast. And that's on page 14 if you just wanted to see the details. On page 15 of the report, it talks about all other and miscellaneous revenue. And I did receive a, a very good question this weekend regarding the August variance under the contributions and donations of $1.5 million. And that has to do directly with the Board of Tax of Revision and the tax increment fi financing agreements on behalf of the city. Again, I just wanted to plant a seed with the board. I'll be reaching out to city officials to try to build that relationship there, understand when these things come through committees at the finance level for the city and how that impacts the schools. And I'm sure I'll see some of you at those those meetings as well. So those are two items I wanted to bring to your attention this month. Thank you. Any further questions that Brian can cover? If you could just, on the variance, the 1.5, say that one more time. So. Sure. Mm -hmm. It's under the, what raised the question was it's receded in our accounting under contributions and donations. So the question was, is this a grant or is just just miscellaneous revenue? And because TIF agreements, so it's, it's economic development agreements that the city has authority over, and really this, the schools don't participate right now in those discussions. We don't vote on those. Uh, 
um, the only time that we can do that is if 100% if of the value is exempt, then we get a set, the board gets a set. So those revenues are receded there, and ultimately what you're seeing is it, it kind of plays havoc on the forecast. It's hard to forecast what's gonna come in next month and what board of tax revision change might come in for next month. So it really, I think, is encouraging me to reach out to the city, identify when those agreements are being made, represent the board, in those and, and try to get a better handle on when those things are going to affect our, our, our financial resources. Any further questions? Thank you very much. I was telling Mr. Pendleton earlier that um, I find his formatting very, very easy to follow and I love the notes that he puts in. Marilyn and I also pointed out that it's easier on the eyes because it's colorful than everything else as well. So um, I thank you for that. All right, Mr. Smith. There you go. I promise this will be very quick. <laughs> um, I just wanted to give you an update on. Um, where we're at with our um, looking at some future projects on the facility uh, plan. And so um, tonight I'm just going to give you an overall update. And then I really want to focus on some issues with elementary schools that then we'll come back to board later with, uh, with some particular and more specific options. But um, so far today, 29 buildings have been completed. We have Firestone and Litchfield um, under construction. I know out in the community there's been some confusion about what's actually going on at Firestone. The new building will house both a Litchfield Middle School and a Firestone High School CLC. Litchfield is currently attending the old Perkins building, so when the building is done, Litchfield and Firestone will move into their respective wings and then the old Firestone will be torn down with the exception of the um, swimming pool, the natatorium. And then we'll put our multi-purpose fields on the site where the old building currently sits. Um, with today's approval of the contracts at Joint Board and here for Harris, we'll get started with uh, early construction. And then uh, we just started uh, prior to the holiday, the uh, POR phases for Case and Ellett School. So those are the next buildings that are in the hopper for probably a year, year and a half of design, and then um, going through design development and uh, hopefully a bid. So a uh, total of 42 buildings. There are seven that will remain that I'll go over uh, in a, a little bit. Original scope, though, was uh, 58 buildings uh, back in 2002 when we came up with that master plan. So again, this is a repeat of some information I provided to you before in terms of factors we consider, the feasibility of a project, you know, an enrollment, uh, trends and the stability of enrollment at a building. So that will really help us uh, look at the future in terms of the remaining buildings, what's actually doable and more importantly, the availabil availability of funds. Um, I'm sorry about that typo on, in terms of in the percentage of state participation. <laughs> uh, the, this is probably the most important chart uh, for us because it actually represents the red line for each of our segments, uh, you know, the master plan, we had the original master plan and then it was divided into segments. And so segment five, Mr. Flesher, includes Ellett and Case. And, and uh, Margaret Park. And Margaret Park's demolition, thank you. So our historical enrollment is in red and you can see when we first started, um, we were at about, with the original master plan, 29,251 students and down uh, even lower than the 21,568. Um, as of uh, when we put together the segment five projection in the fall, 
our uh, commission enrollment based on the population projections completed by De Young when we first started with the initial master plan, it projected that we would be at 30,617 in terms of students, and that would mean that's what we were designing for. And right now, with the current uh, design enrollment, we're down to 19,452, and that's for a build-out year of 2020-21, if I'm not mistaken. And then you see the blue line represents our square footage cost for the projects from the initial master plan and then all the way through what it is today with uh, segment number five. So in short, our population continued to decrease and our square footage costs per building have steadily increased. In terms of those seven remaining projects I mentioned, they're Garfield, Kenmore, North High Schools, Kent Middle School, Miller South, uh, Bettis, Firestone Park, and Piper. Um, at my last report to the board, there are a couple of buildings uh, which house um, specialty programs, uh, such as our uh, uh, program at uh, uh, Barrett, where we put move some uh, programs from juvenile, uh, from the YMCA, and we have juvenile court there. Uh, and we have a couple of other programs, like we put Essex back to use for the early learning program, and then our Bridges Academy, which is at the old Hotchkiss building. And then we have some alternative programming at Reedinger. I didn't put them on here because they were really outside of the master plan. So when we look at approving the uh, process of having Ellet and Case move forward and demolishing Margaret Park, the Commission's whole program is based on students, and so when you look at what we've constructed and what we have planned all the way through Segment 5, including Case and Ellet, our remaining students after those buildings are complete, we have no K-5 through students left. We have 28 grades 6 through 8 students left. 896 for grades 9 through 12 and 330 those are career tech students which will go into a high school so there's a total of 1254 students that the commission will partner with us on in funding what they're saying is based on our square footage and based what we've built so far and based on the students that we're projected to have um, that 2020-21 build-out year, they will partner with us on 1,254 students. And today I just want to talk, of, my focus is really on those elementary projects because according to the commission, we have a big goose egg up there of zero. And I have several buildings that we really do need to build. So when I look at the elementary schools, I've listed their names and the numbers in parentheses. Next to them is their current enrollment. Remember, the commission basically will have a minimum requirement of 350 kids to partner on a project. That's really irrelevant to us now because we have, according to the commission, zero students left to fund. But Bettis has 207 students, so even if we did have students that were fundable, we'd have to increase its enrollment. Firestone Park has 415. Uh, students, Pfeiffer 152, Smith 119, and Lawndale 135. So with Bettis, I think we need to review its long-term enrollment uh, as a standalone as a standalone building or consider a merger into another building. So with uh, that, we would have to look at um, the other schools on the north side of Akron, which would include Forest Hill. Uh, potentially include Harris uh, once it's rebuilt. Uh, we'll have to just take a look at that. Uh, Firestone Park, uh, when you look at the other buildings, there isn't a whole lot of room for, for additions, and Firestone Park's already at 415. Um, that one, we probably will have to look at a renovation add or a complete replacement, uh, swinging them out of Firestone Park uh, to 400 West Market. And then in Kenmore, we have Pfeiffer, Smith, and Lawndale. The problem there is all three are under 350. You could combine them into one school, which would be about 406 students. But again, with uh, zero students available for elementaries, we may need to look at um, 
instead of building a new uh, building on one of the sites like the Piper site, we may want to look at repurposing a current building, uh, modify its programming, and then consolidate the three buildings into one. That would pose some issues with transportation, but those are the things that we will be looking at and then give a report back uh, to the board. So again, um, right now I want, really want to kind of focus on the elementary buildings and uh, get some solutions, potential solutions for those uh, in terms of how we would fund them. Uh, where right now we will be looking at locally funded dollars to do that. I have to then balance it with the balance, you know, with the other projects that are out there, such as uh, our three high schools, Kent and Miller South. And so, um, what we'll do is come back um, with some proposals for these, and then as we get additional information, come back with proposals for the high schools. What we'll do is we'll do the elementaries first, give you some proposals come back and look at um, our high schools and then the, the two middle schools and um, determine how we uh, foresee paying for those or whether those are gonna be um, you know, partnership schools with some other entity to bring some dollars to the table. And then again, um, look at where enrollment sits. I would say Kenmore, that cluster, probably offers a good potential for some consolidation because if I remember the charts correctly, uh, Kenmore's high school population is down to a little over 600. It's less than 700. And then Ennis Middle School, if I'm not mistaken, is down near 300, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Those probably should be combined into maybe a 7 through 12 or a 6 through 12. But again, we'll have to look at the the uh, finances and we're also working with the commission in terms of what they will fund and how they're going to look at some of these numbers um, it, you know in terms of how we're going to allocate the last remaining students in the project so that's really what I have for you today again the next part of this will be coming back with maybe some more concrete proposals for how do we handle our uh, elementary schools and again if you look at uh, Bettis at 207, you look at Firestone Park at 415, you look at the combined uh, Kenmore elementaries that remain with uh, 406 students, we have a lot of work to do, um, you know, just to figure out where they're going to go. I really don't see um, us getting away from doing Firestone Park. Uh, we'll look at the numbers in the other schools, but I don't think they'll all fit. Um, at Bettis uh, with 207, and as the longer we take, our enrollment isn't projected right now to increase, so they're under pressure, as well as the three elementary schools in Kenmore. Are there any questions? Yes, Reverend Walker. Kenmore, um, <clears throat> we don't have any money from the state to build a new building. If we decided to build a new building to incorporate all three of those no, elementary school right no there's um kenmore the, with the the issue that we've had with the commission has been they didn't think kenmore was eligible for replacement because they thought the condition was uh too nice it didn't meet the two-thirds right. rule but now it does if i'm not mistaken so it could be uh, replaced and they would participate if we chose that particular building or a portion a certain number of those high school students that are available to a building like Kenmore. There would be some issues with middle school because yeah. remember, we built in us. Right. So those are some things we have to look at. But, um, but the elementary, as if we were able to build an elementary, that would be all of our Yes, that would be funded, all locally funded locally initiative funded money. money. Um, now, you presented this to us, and the public is going to be seeing this at right. some point. Will we be meeting with yes. those three schools? Because I'm concerned with, I know some of the concerns there is a constituency there that uh, if you close one building, we're going to leave. Mm -hmm. And I don't, I want to figure out how we can keep those in Akron Public Schools because right. we're already seeing a downward spiral of losing students so however we are going to roll this out right um, we want to be leading 
the train and not trying exactly. to catch up to the train. And I think the important thing to remember to my friends at the table is that we haven't made any, no one's closing right now. We haven't made any decisions about that. We're just talking about the reality of these low enrollment buildings and how are we going to look at um, either not being able to replace them or making some changes so that they can take part in new facilities uh, that the rest of the district's elementary students are partaking in. So that's, there's a lot more work that has to be done. Would you just happen to have on the top of your head what uh, Garfield and uh, Roswell Kitt's numbers are? Um, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm on the wheel of fortune. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's see. Garfield, we have uh, 758 uh, students, and at let me make sure that's the right color. Yeah, Garfield 758, and Kent is 475. Any other questions? All right, well, we'll be back with, uh, like I said, additional information on um, all of our options and, and, and our work with the city and the uh, Ohio Facilities Construction Commission. So we're apportioning those students. And I think what we're going to have to do is really have some creative partnerships with some folks in order to, uh, particularly at the high schools, to make sure we can get through those. Yes, sir. Just a random question. Our estimates and their estimates, there's always that gap and the trend kind of goes like this and there's about a 2,000 student gap how often just out of curiosity or maybe you know or don't know have our what we've actually the students that we've actually had enrolled in each segment matched or not matched or beat their projections, I mean, because it always seems to be off by about 2,000 students. It is, and the one thing you have to understand is that they look, how many years is it? Five or 10 years? Their projections. Yeah, and so their projections are always in the future, and I, we actually have them all charted out. So their first projection showed very little change. It was going to be 30,000 students, and within like two years of starting the project, we had already missed on our actual enrollment. So as they did the second and third iteration of that, those projections that um, the OS, OFCC has done have pretty much matched them more recently in terms of where our actual enrollment is and where their projected enrollment is as they've gotten more experience with looking at our demographics. So they are, they've been, recently they've been pretty close compared to what they did, you know, back at the beginning of the project. All right. Okay, well, thank you. With all that being said, um, the superintendent, I'm sure, will keep the board up to date on when those meetings in the community will be. What I would do is encourage the board to be there to listen. It is the superintendent's meeting. He will lead those meetings. But we can be, we are more than welcome to be there to listen to the feedback and, and listen to his presentation in the community. Um, so I would encourage you to uh, watch your email for those dates to come out as, as they get set. Um, we are on to committee reports. But just uh, our weekly thank you for donations from the Finance Committee. Uh, briefly, we had, once again, many donations to Project RISE. Carol Smith, uh, Dave's Market, uh, North High School uh, made handmade pillowcases donated to Project RISE. We had the Akron Public School van drivers donate gift cards as well as donate winter gloves and other educational gifts to Project RISE uh, and a cash donation from the APS van driver. So our own people giving back to our kids in our community, it's very nice to see. Uh, we have the Paradise Club, uh, Downtown Akron Partnership, also donated different items to Project Rise. We had Linda McDonald donate uh, coats to Finley CLC. We had school supplies from the Notre Dame Club to Finley CLC. We had hats and gloves and mittens and slippers from the Akron Association 
of classified personnel to Finley, once again, our own giving back to our own schools. Um, we had uh, Dave Lombardi's father made a donation to Finley CLC. We had uh, Susan Bryan Vogelsang, that was another one to Project Rise, and then we had cash donations from David Boger to both Kent Middle School and Garfield High School to use at the discretion of the principal. Those were both $1,000 cash donations from that individual. A uh, $1,000 cash donation from Ronald Coley to North High School for the Catherine Coley Scholarship Fund. And lastly, $1,000 from Eileen Berg to the Office of Community Relations to support the Akron Reads program in memory of Peter Berg. So thank you to all those who donated. Thank you for reading this. Any other committee reports? All right. Thank you very much. Looking on our agenda, it does list as unfinished business the rules and regulations of the board. We are not going to vote on that tonight. There are still some things that need to be hammered out. Um, so we don't need to table over doing anything that we're just not taking action on that tonight. Um, is there any new business? Hearing none, I need a motion to go into executive session pursuant to Ohio Revised Code 121.22 G1 to discuss employment and G3 to consult with legal counsel. Um, yes. So moved. Second. Moved and properly seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. President Walker? Yes. Mr. Alexander? Yes. Mr. Bravo? Yes. Mr. Lombardi? Yes. Mrs. Mason? Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Mrs. Sims? Yes. 